Hello, this is Mr. Henry, and this is lesson 3.5, Right Ratios and Proportions. So the essential question is, how do I find ratios and write and solve proportions? Um, we're going to be using some of the same equation solving that we did the past few lessons, but most of these are going to be quite a bit simpler. Okay, so let's start here with number one. Number one is a one-step equation. We solve this guy. This is a multiply, so we divide by 2, divide by 2, these cancel, and we get g equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. Number 2. Hmm, this problem looks familiar. Um, it's still wrong, though, because we were supposed to subtract by 9 on both sides. 21 minus 9 was... Hmm, I don't remember. 21... Minus 9 is 12. And then when we divide by 4, divide by 4, these cancel out. m equals 3. Number 3, we have parentheses, so we have to start by distributing. We get 3b plus 15 plus 5 equals negative 1. Hmm. I can combine those two things together. 15 plus 5. They're both positive, so that together that gives us 20. Then I subtract 20 here, subtract 20 there. And let's see. That gives me 3b equals negative 21. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Cancel. b equals negative 21. Divided by 3 is a negative 7. All right, number four. Um, there's no parentheses. I cannot combine anything on either side. I do have variables on both sides, so I get rid of this one. Subtract 10n, because this is positive, so I subtract it away. Now it's 0. I get a negative 3n minus 5 equals 13. OK? Get rid of the added subtract, so I add 5 here, add 5 there. And let's see how correct I was up to here. I should have a negative 3n equals 18. But this is not done. The variable is not by itself. So if I subtract, I'm sorry, divide both sides by negative 3, I get n equals a negative 6. All right. So those were our get the goops. Now let's get into the vocabulary and get into proportions. So the vocabulary here, first off, we have this word ratio. A ratio, honestly, is just a division that compares two quantities. For most of us, we can actually write ratios in three ways. We can write a ratio as 3 fourths, or 3 to 4, 3 to 4, 3 to 4. All three of them are read the same way. You'd read it as 3 two, four, like that. That's how you read it. But it's just comparing two different quantities. Okay, This could be um, teachers and this could be students. It could be apples and oranges. It could be um, bananas and chairs. It really doesn't matter. It's just comparing two quantities. A proportion is an equation that says that two ratios are equal. So if I have the ratio of 1 to 5, and this might be maybe 4 to 20, this is a proportion, saying that this ratio is equal to that ratio. Most of the proportions we're going to see, though, there is one missing piece that we're going to have to find. So it's not going to give you all four numbers like this. And simplest form is when you take a fraction and you simplify it, until it cannot be reduced anymore, when a fraction can't be reduced anymore. So if we have the fraction uh, do, 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 do 20 over 32, why not? Both top and bottom here can be divided by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 32 divided by 4 is 8. This is now in simplest form, because you cannot divide top and bottom by anything else. Okay, so those are the vocabulary words. Uh, let's actually get into some writing and solving proportions. 
So the first thing we do is we're just going to write some. So number one says um, some information. A volleyball team plays 14 home matches and 10 away matches. So 14 at home, 10 away. Those are the important pieces of information. Find the ratio of home matches to away matches. Now we're going to have to write a ratio in the same order that they ask us. Home to away. So home to away. That's one way of writing this. We could also write this as home to away and home to away. Now one thing you're going to notice is that in my fraction here, this is sort of like a fraction. It's not exactly the same thing. We can't add them and subtract them like we did with normal fractions, but we can simplify them. This fraction can be simplified. Top and bottom here can be divided by 2, which gives me 7 over 5. Now, one thing that you might be asking yourself is, well, can we take this 7 over 5 and then change it into 1 and 2 fifths? And the answer is no. You can't. Because a ratio compares two numbers. This 7 over 5 is the home to the away games. Where's your home and away here? You can't say, oh, it's two home and five away. That's not the same thing. So we do not want to change it into an improper into a mixed number. We want to leave our ratios as fractions. Even if they're improper, that's okay. And then since we simplify this, we could always change this to 7 to 5 and 7 to 5 as well. Letter B. Find the ratio of home matches to all matches. So we want home to all. Okay, how many home games? Well, there were 14 home games to all matches. So all matches would be the total games, the home and the way together. Well, home and away together would give us 24. Let's simplify this first, and then we'll write the ratio the other way. So 14 over 24, um, top and bottom, can be divided by 2. That gives us 7 over 12. And that is in simplest form, so there's one way. You have 7 to 12 this way, 7 to 12 that way. All right. So we can write our ratio all three ways. We can simplify ratios. I'm going to give you two problems to try. So um, it says here, at a car wash fundraiser, 18 ninth grade students, or yeah, ninth grade students and 14 10th grade students worked the first shift. Find the ratio of 9th graders to 10th graders. Find the ratio of 9th graders to all students. Please write those ratios right now. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we will go on from there. Okay, let us see. So we want 9th grade to 10th grade. I like doing this. It helps me keep track of my labels. So, ninth graders, there were 18 of them, and 10th graders, there were 14 of them. Simplify. Um, divide top and bottom by 2 works because both numbers are even. That gives me 9 here and 7 there, and that does not simplify anymore. So, there's one ratio. There's the second ratio, and 9 to 7, there's the third. Letter D. Uh, find the ratio of ninth graders to all students. Well, let's see. Ninth graders, there was 18. All students would be the total. So there's 18 ninth graders, 14 tenth graders, giving us a total of 32 students. And let's simplify this thing. Um, top and bottom, again, can be divided by 2 because they're both even, giving us 9 over 16. Um, three, nope, nothing goes into that, so that's one form. We also have the 9 to 16 and the 9 colon 16. So that is our 
writing a ratio from a little word problem. Very simple. The only thing you really got to do is just make sure you keep the numbers in the same order as the problem asks. So ninth graders to all students. If you'd put um, that, this is not the ratio of ninth graders to all students. This is the ratio of all students to ninth graders, and it makes a difference because um, nine sixteenths is not the same thing as sixteen ninths. So just watch out for your labels. Now. As far as solving a proportion, there are a multiple ways of ways to solve proportions. But really, there's only one good way. There's one way that works in every single problem, no matter what the problem looks like. Um, I mean, and I personally would rather learn one way that always works than a couple different ways that only sometimes work. So let's figure out how we're going to solve these. So we're going to solve these using cross multiplying, cross products. That is the one best way to solve every proportion ever. So here we have a proportion. This is two ratios that are set equal. You'll notice that one of the pieces is a variable. So to cross multiply, you might remember this from pre-algebra or even course two, you take this number times by that number, put your answer over here. So 4 times m is 4m. You take this number times by this number, so 15 times 6, and you put your answer over here. And that is 90. That is all cross multiply. The rest of it is to solve. So we cross multiply, then solve. We need to get the variable by itself, the same way we did before. So we're going to, well, this variable is being multiplied by 4, so we divide by 4. Divide by 4. m equals, and 90 divided by 4, 90 divided by 4 equals 22.5. That is our answer. And really, that's all there is to cross-multiplying. You take the diagonals and you multiply them, then you solve for the variable. So here in letter B, I'm going to take 18 times 4, put my answer here, 9 times x, put my answer there. 9 times x is 9x. 18 times 4, 40 and 32 is 72. Double check though. 18 times 4 equals 72. Alright, that's the cross multiply. Now, Second step is solve. My variable is being multiplied by 9, so I divide by 9. Cancel. x equals 72 divided by 9 is 8. That's it. That's all there is to it. So we're just going to do that same thing like a bazillion times. So, letter C. Um, cross multiply here, cross multiply there. 5 times x is 5x. By the way, the reason why 5 times x is 5x is because we don't know what x is, so we can't actually multiply it. So the best thing we could do is just leave it as 5 times x. That's why we leave it as 5x. Um, 9 times 14, well, that's 90, and 36 is like 126. 9 times 13, wait, was it 9 times 13? 9 times 14, that's why I'm wrong. 9 times 14... Let's say 136, 126. That was close. 126. Now to solve, get the variable by itself. So I divide by 5, divide by 5. These cancel. x equals 126 divided by 5. That's going to go in 25.2. But I'll double check. 126 divided by 5 equals. 25.2. By the way, it's okay to get decimals for answers. It's going to happen occasionally. Not every single problem will work out exactly perfect. This is another one that does not work out exactly to an even number. m times 16, 16m. 5 times 20 is 100. Solve. So we have to divide by 16, divide by 16 m equals 100 divided by 16. I cannot do that one in my head. 
6.25. And that's what we got. So you multiply the diagonals, solve, done. Next four, I'd like you to copy them down, do them on your own, um, hit pause and work on them. When you're ready to continue, hit play and we'll work through them together. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll change color. Let's multiply 7 times h is 7h. 3 times 9 is 21. No, 27. Divide by 3, or divide by 7 here, divide by 7 here. These cancel. h equals 20 divided by 7. 27 divided by 7 is, let's call it 3.86. 3.86. The reason why we're calling 86 is we're going to round the 7 so the 5 goes up to 6 because the 7 next to it. Letter F. Uh, let's see, we're going to multiply here and here. This gives me a 5m. That gives me an 80. This is a multiply, so we divide by 5. Divide by 5. m equals 80 divided by 5 is 16. Double check it. 80 divided by 5 is 16. By the way, that is kind of the whole point of a calculator is to double check your math. So even though I'm doing it in my head, I'm always double checking it. Letter G. Cross multiply. So we're going to take 3 times 6 is 18. Cross multiply. 9 times y is 9y, or 9 times y. Uh, to solve, we have to divide by 9 here, divide by 9 here, y equals 2. By the way, if you're hearing the noise in the background, it's my ferrets in their cage. Uh, let's see, letter H. Cross multiply here, 2x. Cross multiply here, 8 times 14. 8 times 14 is 112. To solve, we have to divide by 2 to get rid of that. Divide by 2 here. x equals 112 divided by 2 is 66, I think. Divide by 2, 56. 56. And we done. Okay. Two more. Bonus. You got I and J. Pause the video. Do them on your own. Hit play when you're done. Alright. Together, these problems should only take like 30 seconds. So let's go through it at full speed. Uh, 3 times 8 is 24. 2 times R is 2R. Uh, divide by 2 here. Divide by 2 here. Cancel. R equals 12. Done. 3 times w is 3w, 5 times 9 is 45, divide by 3, cancel, divide by 3, w equals 45, divided by 3 is 15, done. I should have timed myself. I bet that was quicker than 30 seconds. Okay, that's how quick these problems should be. And when you get good, you'll notice that as well. They are very quick and simple. So. I have a few problems out of the textbook for you to try. Page 162 and 163, numbers 1 through 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go ahead, pause the video, do them right now, and then we will get back together here in a second. All right, number 1. The number of Derek's CDs to the number of his brother's CDs. So we want Derek to brother. Derek has 44. Derek to brother. His brother has 52. Let's simplify this. Those are both even numbers, so I can divide by 2. I might even be able to divide by 4, but we'll divide by 2 first. Divide by 2 gives me 22. Divide by 2 gives me 26. And I can divide again, so let's divide by 2. Divide by 2 gives me 11 over 13. That cannot simplify anymore because those are both prime numbers. So there's number one. Um, and I guess we could write it the other ways as well. We've got 11 
2, 13, 11, colon, 13. There we go. Number two, the number of Derek's CDs to the entire collection. So we need Derek to total. The total CDs is 96. That can be simplified, I guarantee, both top and bottom can be divided by 4. That gives us 11. 96 divided by 4, uh, 25, 24 is my guess. 96 divided by 4 is 24. And that cannot be simplified anymore because that is a prime number. So there's a fraction. There's with the 2. There's with the colon. Numbers 3, 4, 5, we're going to just cross multiply. So we take 7 times w is 7w. We take 35 times 4, which will be 140, I think. 35 times 4, 140. Divide by 7 here, divide by 7 here, and w equals 20. Nine times twelve is eighty-four. No, that doesn't look right. Nine times twelve. One oh eight, I bet. There it is. See, my brain's faster than the calculator. One oh eight. Two times m is two m. Divide by two. Divide by two. Cancel out. M equals fifty-four. Brain's faster than calculator. 9 times z is 9z. Uh, not faster this time. 54 times 5. I can't do that. I could. I just don't want to. 54 times by 5 is 270. I can do this one, though. Divide by 9. Divide by 9. Cancels out. z equals 30. Still double-checked it, though. Just want to make sure I'm correct. Okay, so that is cross product. Yeah, cross product. Let's see some wordy problems. Simple, but little wordy problems. So it says here, a bird flaps its wings two times per second. How long would it take to flap its wings 20 times? Now, when you have a word problem and proportions, the one most important thing that you can have is labels. So when you have little word problems like this, usually the first sentence has the first half of the proportion. The second sentence is the second half. So it says here, a bird flaps its wings two times per second. So watch this. Two times, or I'm going to call it two flaps, because it flaps its wings. Two flaps per second. Well, how many seconds is that per second? It's one. Two times in one second. Now, look at this, my labels. Flaps, seconds. Go ahead and copy the labels over. Flaps, seconds, flaps, seconds. Your labels should always match up going across. If they don't, there's a good chance you're going to make a mistake. So flaps, flaps, seconds, seconds. Now we can read the second half, and this is like almost done. How long would it take to flap its wings 20 times? We're talking about 20 flaps. Well, is the 20 flaps going to go up here or down here? Where would 20 flaps go? It goes there, because that's where our label is. That means this guy is our variable. Now we cross multiply and solve. So we're going to take 2 times x is 2x. 1, that's an s, not a 5. This is not 15. 1 times 20 is 20. And if I solve this, 2x equals 20. There we go. Divide by 2 here, divide by 2 here. x equals 10, and my label was seconds. So it would take 10 seconds for this bird to flap its wings 20 times. Letter B. A painter needs three buckets of paint for two walls. Watch this. Three buckets of paint for two walls. Buckets, buckets, walls, walls. How many buckets are needed to paint 15 walls? Well, where is this 15 walls going to go? It's got to go down here. It even says how many buckets. 
That's the thing you don't know, so that's the variable. Now we cross multiply. Uh, 15 times 3 is 45. 2 times x is 2x. We need to divide by 2. Divide by 2. These cancel. We get x equals, we're over here, x equals 45 divided by 2 is 22.5. And that is 22.5 buckets. So, when you're doing, make sure you have labels in your problem. Make sure you have a label on your answer. Those labels are extremely important. Letter C, I have one for you to try. Please copy it down. Do the problem. Pause the video. When you're ready to continue, hit play. I'll even read it for you. A car can travel 350 miles on 11 gallons of gas. How, car, yeah, how far could it travel with 50 gallons of gas? Okay, let's see. Um, 350 miles on 11 gallons of gas. Miles, miles, gallons, gallons. Okay, how far could it travel with 50 gallons of gas? It gives me gallons, so I put the 50 at the gallons. How far? I don't know how many miles. That's the variable. So now when we cross multiply, I'll change color. 11 times x is 11x. 50 times 350, I could probably do it, but I don't want to. 50 times 350, 1,000... I'm sorry, 17,500. Divide both sides by 11. These cancel. x equals. Divide by 11. 1,590.9. 1,590.9. And the label there is miles. So if I had a 50-gallon tank, I could go 1,590 miles before I need to fill up. Labels in the problem, labels in your answer. Okay, last two problems come from the textbook, and we're done. This it comes from page 164. Number 6 says, um, in example 3, suppose the elevator travels 125 feet in 5 seconds. Find the time it would take to go... Uh, for the elevator to travel from the lobby to the observation floor, and I put here th the distance is 129 feet. And number seven says, when two full moons appear in the same month, the second full moon is called the blue moon. On average, two blue moons occur every five years. Find the number of blue moons that are likely to occur in the next 25 years. So for both problems, set up a proportion, cross multiply, solve. When you're ready to continue, hit play. All right, number six. Um, our elevator travels 125 feet in five seconds. 125 feet in five seconds. Feet, feet, seconds, seconds. Labels always match up going across. Find the time it would take for the, ele for the elevator to travel. So find the time, which means we don't know the time. For the elevator to travel, this 1,029 feet. Feet goes with feet. Okay, let's cross multiply him. So x times 125 is 125 x. 5 times 1,029. 5 times 1,000. Five thousand one hundred and forty five. Five, one, four, five. And then we, well, we cross multiplied. Now we solve. Divide by 125. Divide by 125 because that makes this go away. X equals, see, there's our 5,000 number. Divide by 125 equals 41.16. 41.16. Forty-one point one six, and our label would be 
seconds. So it would take 41 seconds to travel that elevator. That's a long elevator. Number seven. We'll use blue because we're talking about blue moons here. Number seven. Um, so blah, 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 blah. Two blue moons occur every five years. So two blue moons every five years. Notice my labels. So blue moons, years. Find the number of blue moons. We do not know how many blue moons that are likely to occur in the next 25 years. So years is 25. Now we cross multiply. So 25 times 2 is 50. 5 times x is 5 times x, or 5x. Divide by 5 here, divide by 5 here, x equals 50. Divided by 5 is 10, and my label is 10 blue moons. So in 25 years, there would be 10 blue moons. Last but not least, let's do our summary. In the summary box in the bottom of your note sheet, it says, how do you set up and solve a proportion? Write a little sentence, a thought, describe how you set up a proportion and how you solve it. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we will see what we come up with. OK, so summary. How do you set up and solve a proportion? Well, um, the setup, the one thing you got to make sure when you're setting up a proportion is that your labels match up going across. So how do you set up a proportion? Match up labels. Going across. So your labels match up going across. That's how you set it up. How do you solve a proportion? To solve what do we do? Well, we cross multiply. Then solve. Solve the equation, I guess. And that's what we did. So you match the labels going across to solve, cross multiply, then solve the equation. That's what we got. Homework. Homework comes from page 165 uh, and 166. Numbers 2 through 24 evens and 47 through 51. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, dot, 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 and 47 through 51. And this has been lesson 3.5. Thanks for tuning in.